Vienna Ensemble Pro. What is it? How do you work it? And do you need it? Let's find out in this video. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. If you're new here, I create videos on how to orchestrate and create music within a DAW. If that interests you, you can always hit the subscribe button. Also, my patrons get access to the MIDI files of the music that I create in my videos. Anyway, let's talk about the Vienna Symphonic Library. They create lots of wonderful instruments. But something that really piqued my interest was the Vienna Ensemble Pro that I didn't know much about. So I contacted them and they were very kind enough to send me a review copy. So this will not just be a review, but also let's go deep into it and find out how it works and some extra tips that will get you going. So what is Vienna Ensemble Pro? Well, I don't really know what to call it, but let's think of it as a host or an instrument outside of your DAW that keeps track of all your instruments. So you don't have to load any instruments in your DAW. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, you might have noticed if you work on really big, large projects, maybe big orchestras, that if you load a lot of instruments into your DAW, it tends to become unstable. Not so much because the DAW is bad or anything, just because when you use so much RAM and maybe the plugins themselves are not that good, it crashes and it can lead to corrupt project files. So if you have all your instruments separately in a different program, that program, Vienna, can crash, which it hardly doesn't because it's very well optimized. But if that happens, your DAW is untouched. You haven't lost anything on your project files. Also, it will speed up your workflow because saving anything in your DAW is a matter of milliseconds. You know, if you have a lot of instruments in your DAW and you save all that, the DAW has to keep track of all that data and it can take minutes to save. You can also have the Vienna Ensemble loaded so no matter what projects you work on, you don't have to reload all those instruments. And if you're a real pro, you can have Vienna Ensemble on a different computer entirely. But let's get into the program, how to set it up and how it works. Before we get really deep into this and how to set it up, I just wanted to give you a quick look into what the program looks like and what you get with it, because it actually has some nice instruments and effects included. But otherwise, this looks like a DAW almost. You have channels here with normal controls. You have a mixer window. You can look at the instrument if you have one loaded. And you get a lot of nice effects. Let's take a look at them. For example, the equalizer really impressed me. It's very easy, intuitive to use, and it's also scalable. And this is so nice. You can make it bigger or smaller. We love that. It has a nice piano roll. And when you click on it, you hear that frequency. So it's a lot easier to find problems. It's not a dynamic EQ, but it's a great EQ. It also has some great presets that I actually didn't find first because I wasn't looking for them. But I realized they're fantastic because not only are they good presets, but they're also specific to some of the Vienna instruments. If you have those or the Synchron player, it's a lot easier to find good presets or something to start with at least. Let's look at the compressor. Also very impressed with this. Good, easy controls. It's very easy to see what you're doing. You have a nice graph that tells you what's going on. And again, nice presets if you want to start. But it's very capable, has a lot of options. Fat and Opto, for example, if you know what those things are. It also has an exciter, which works very nicely. Again, nice presets there. It also has, well, it's called Matrix Mixer, but I find this is kind of a stereo widener. You can then on the different channels change the volume, but perhaps the most important is to change the delay so you get a spread. You have a lot of options there. Very nice, works very well. Obviously, you can use your own plugins as well. If you click here on the channel, you get all the plugins that you have installed and then the integrated ones are the ones that come with VSL. So you have an analyzer, for example, which is very capable as well. And we also have a limiter here, which is also very capable, but that's not all. You also get quite a capable orchestra with this program. Well, it's not something that will replace my big orchestral template, but it definitely sounds very good. It's very easy to use. I find it a very good sketch tool. I was quite surprised at some of the sounds of this instrument. So let's take a look at those. I have now gone over to my DAW, but everything is still being played from the Vienna Ensemble. So let's just take a look at some of the sounds that you get. You have some nice strings here. Quite a good dynamic curve there. And then the woodwinds, I really like those.
All these patches have key switches and you have quite a lot of sound. So the strings are not just long, you have shorts and pizzicato and all kinds of stuff. Then we have a nice legato oboe. You don't get too many legato instruments, but this is one of them. And also it says coronet, which is another word for a trumpet. Trumpet ensemble. Again, I'm not showing all the articulations. Horns. And then there are a few more patches, but I want to show you these horns as well, because I really like them. And then we have some timpani. And some percussion, which is basically a, a bunch of different sounds. And we also get some synths. I've just loaded one pad here, but I think you get about five or six different ones. But I think the best is actually to show you a little piece I just created. And I just want to say again, this is not replacing my big professional orchestra template, but still it sounds fairly good and it's great for a quick hookup. So let's take a really deep look into how the program works so you know exactly how to get the most out of it. Now I won't show everything there is obviously, but everything to get you started as soon as possible. And if you don't have the program, you might want to skip this section, but it could be interesting also to see more how it actually works if you're considering purchasing this. The first thing I wanted to show you is that there are several programs on your computer. It might be tricky to know which one you're supposed to actually use. Well, there is the standalone version. You don't want to use that if you use a DAW. And there is the six version, which is the old one, which is about backwards compatibility. And there is also the 32 2-bit and the 64-bit version. Most of us probably want to use the Vienna Ensemble Pro Server 7 64-bit version, so make sure you choose the right one. First thing is to go into Preferences and check a few things here. It's not a lot you need to look at, but perhaps instances would be interesting for you, and that is to make sure your multiprocessing is set up correctly. Now, in most cases, you might just want to put this as one thread, and I have an old computer, I have an i5, which is still fast processor, so I don't really need to set this differently because I only have four cores, but if you have a really fast CPU, you might want to change that so you can have more power, maybe two or three threads if you can afford it, to each instance. And we're going to talk more about instances in a while. You might want to change the MIDI ports and outputs, but for most people the default is definitely enough. And then maybe you want to change the default MIDI channel. I set it to all because that's the way I like to work, but you can set it to one or none or whatever you like. Now, the most important thing though is plugins, because if there's nothing here, then Vienna has nothing to work with. So you have to go to VST settings. You have to find the folders you want to work with by adding folders, scanning them, and then your VST instruments will show up. There's one thing I want to mention though that I've noticed is that Vienna doesn't seem to find VST3 instruments, at least not for me. Maybe I did something wrong. I did double check a few times, but VST2 instruments. So if you find that it doesn't find your particular instrument, make sure that you have the VST2 version of that plugin installed as well. All right, I'm going to close here because that's pretty much it you need there. Okay, let's look at how you set up a template in VSL. Let's go to file and then you go to add new instrument. Instance. Here you will have an instance. This box is the instance and everything down here is everything contained within this box, you could say. And what is this? Well, it's sort of a group track maybe or a session or different instruments and plugins. So let's change this. I want it to be called strings. Strings. 
And then I want to right click here and I want to set the color. Let's have, that might be a good color. And then I want to right click again and change to switch instances list orientation. You absolutely do not have to do this. I'm just showing you, I prefer it this way. Then I have all my instances on the left instead of on top. Before we go on with this, I just wanted to say this automation here, it's very useful. You can load anything up here, any instruments you want. And then you can click on learn and touch your MIDI controller and you can automate that process. I don't use it, so I turn it off so I have a bigger view. Otherwise, I use it in my DAW instead. Okay, so let's talk about these buttons here. We have a contact here that will lit when you're connected to your DAW and I will show that a little bit later. Then this button is on and off, very simple. You can turn this instance off and you can unload the samples and save some RAM. This is the CPU usage. There's nothing going on right now. And this is a MIDI indicator. And here we have this lock button that shows that if your samples are loaded here, then they won't be unloaded when you close your project in your DAW, which is very handy. You can, of course, turn that off and then they will be unloaded when you close your project in your DAW. This is a decoupled button, which I will talk more about in the DAW section. So let's just load up an instrument here. We're in the instance, so I'm just going to add a, sorry, in East-West Opus. Here we go. I usually change this one. It's easier to know what's going on. I can't spell today. Legato. And it's very simple. This is like a DAW pretty much. You can see uh, here I can change the instrument if I want to. Here I can change the volume, the pan, mute, solo. And let's talk about this because this can be a little bit confusing. You might remember that in the settings, I set this to be all. But let's talk about this. This is the input MIDI, MIDI input. So you can have up to 16 different MIDI inputs. And then you have the middle channel. And you can also have 16. So 16 by 16 gives you quite a lot of options. This will become a little bit more clear when I work with the DAW. But just know that this is there. Then here, master bus, it says, because this is rooted to the master bus up here, but I can also change a different output if I want to. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a while. This is very good to have if you, for example, have several channels here and you want them all to be controlled by one master. You could, for example, change the volume or put in effects here. Uh, Vienna has effects included. But in this case, the way I work, I don't need the master channel. So I'm going to remove that one. You can keep it, you do as you want. I'm just going to show you why. So I'm going to speed up time a little bit and load quite a few tracks here and show a little bit the way I work. Okay, so here I have quite a few different channels in one instance. And let's take a look at the first one, the solo violin. This is just one instrument or one articulation, you can say. So I don't need many channels or many tracks. So I have one MIDI input and I have MIDI channel one because it's only one. If I had several tracks here, I might want to have more. Okay, and I have it rooted to the first output because I want all these to be separate. I don't want them to come out on the same channel in my DAW later on. Now the next one, violin one, I want it to be separate, so I have MIDI input two, right? So I can separate them in my DAW later. But here I have quite a few different articulations, see? And I want them all to be controlled by this channel. So I put all, so this channel can play all of these different uh, articulations. Not on the same time though, but they're able to do so, and that's why all needs to be selected. If I have only one or two, then I can only play that channel one, for example, right? And then I have it rooted to an other output and so on. This will become a little bit more clear in the DAW section. Okay, and you can see here are different MIDI inputs, all different output and so on. So let's take a look in the DAW and see how this is set up. Okay, so here I am in my DAW. I have Cubase, but this hopefully works pretty similar in your DAW as well. I hope you get an idea of how it works. So in Cubase, you have to use something called racks here, not the instrument channel. So I'm gonna find the Vienna. And here's something interesting. There's so many options. Which one am I supposed to use, right? You're supposed to use the Vienna Ensemble Pro and nothing else. Okay, there you go. And there it starts. Yes, I do want a mini channel. And this can seem a little bit confusing in the beginning. We're just going to close this down. So this is what you get. This is your interface, like when you open Contact or Opus or any other instrument. So we want to connect this to our VSL, which I have open. Okay, so I click connect and then we'll see here strings that I created before is there. 
because we haven't connected it. Anything that is not connected will show up here. I click connect. And there it is. We'll see it's connected. It has the same color and says string. So we know this one is connected. This lock icon is the same as the one in VSL. You can unclick it if you don't want the samples to continue to be loaded when you close this project. This is the same. You can turn on and off the samples if you want to. And this, if you click it, it will open up. See the section here. So I'll go directly to VSL and it will show me what's going on there, which can be handy. There's another way to do that. I can go to the cogwheel here and I can make sure that auto race instance is open. And when that is open, as soon as I click on instrument here, I open it up. Voila, I'm back in VSL as well. Okay, so what else do we have here? We have the buffers. And I would say none to two is the best option. Uh, none is more if you have very few tracks and a fast CPU and a good audio card. Uh, you might find that if you don't, you might stutter a little bit. But I found that even with one or two, it works fine. I don't notice a big latency. Perhaps on uh, percussion, you want to use maybe one or none if you want more accuracy. So why would you want to use three and four? Well, when you do playback and you have a lot of instruments, you don't need to put any MIDI data in. You want a smooth playback with lots of effects, then three and four works much better. So something to consider. So now this decouple, what is this? Now when it's off, it means that the instruments are coupled. And that means when I save data in my DAW, all the instrument data also will be saved. If I click this on, now that means they are decoupled and the instrument data won't be saved in my DAW. Why is this handy? Well, if you have an enormous template, really, really big with massive amount of instruments, if I decouple, then the saving time in my DAW are, is a matter of milliseconds. But if this is coupled off, it's a little tricky there, but it's when it's off, it's coupled, then it means that all the instrument data also will be saved into Qubits. And that's why these big templates take so long to save. So what is a good thing here? Well, when I work, I usually have it on, which means it's decoupled. And then every time I save in the middle of the project, just to be sure, or I have auto save on, it just takes milliseconds. I won't even notice it. And then when I'm done for the day with that song, I couple it again and click save. And I save all the data that I need. Maybe I want to call this uh, violin one leg out or something like that, just so I know. Okay, so how do I hook this up? Because I have quite a few instruments in VSL. So let's go back and look again. What do we have here? We are on channel two. We're linked to strings, so that's fine already. But we're here on MIDI input two. And in this case, it's middle channel one. Not here, it needs to be all, so all of them can be used, but middle channel one. So we want to connect that in our DAW. So I go here and you see there's tons of different Vienna Ensemble Pro here, but you can see there's six of them, right? They're all one because we only have one connected, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah. So you want the second one, MIDI input two, that's the violin one, right? And then we want to make sure it's the channel one. And then I will hear that sound. So maybe I want a, a long as well. So I add a MIDI track here. Now, since I add this directly to this, it will be connected automatically, but I'm going to show anyway. So uh, violin sus, we can call it, right? There we go. And we just want to double check. It's still the same one. Yes, it is. MIDI input two and channel two in this case. And I will hear that track. So there's one more thing. How do we route this into or route this into different audio channels? Well, you have to open them in your DAW. In Cubase, you go in here and you do activate outputs. It probably will be a little bit different in your DAW, but I, I'm sure you know this already. So I click on that and I basically start all the different outputs that I need to have on. So there we have it. And now when all these are out, I can actually see them here if I want to. Or I can just look in my mixer. I'm going to drag that in. What I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to turn off the view of my MIDI channels because I don't want to see them here in the mixer. And now I know that this second one here is violin one, for example. The other one was the solo one, if you wonder. So solo, violin, and so on. And then I type in the names here. So then I will have the correct chance rooted. I usually change the colors here as well, so I know exactly. So they match here. All right, so hopefully now you know how to connect it in your DAW and how to route the audio channels.
So we have a few buttons here I haven't mentioned, and that is because they are only working when you have Vienna instruments. So what do they do? Well, reset, for example, that means that you won't get rid of your instrument, but all the samples loaded into memory will be wiped. So you can save a lot of memory that way. Uh, for example, Opus and even Contact has that function built in. So you can still do that, but you can't do it with one click. Then they have Optimize, and that means that when you are finished with your song, you can click Optimize, and all the samples that are, have not been used are removed. Also a great way to save RAM. And the Learn is kind of the same thing. It's more you click Learn, and then you play this song, and then Vienna will learn what samples you are using. Then they also have a tuning fork, which is interesting. You can tune the high, entire orchestra up and down, but it only works for Vienna instruments again. So I just wanted to show you the incorrect way of doing this. And if you work for VSL or if you have used this program before, I, I hope you don't get a heart attack when you see that I have loaded so many instances. Everybody says that's not the way to do it. It won't optimize your CPU and you might crash and not work. But I will tell you why I still do this. And you might want to try it yourself. Uh, on your own risk here. And that is because I haven't noticed any performance difference in doing this or setting up with few instances. And that could be because I have an old CPU or a different computer or a different setup. I don't know. But I've noticed there is no difference, so I do this. The other way I really like about this is that I have an easier control of things. Each instance is an instrument. Now, I can have several articulations, yes but they are all the same sound, the same instruments, and that's the way I like it. So I can remove or turn off anything very easily if I don't need it. Very, very important. And also, it's much easier to route in my DAW, because one instance that I connect is also the main output. I don't have to worry about adding other outputs or adding different MIDI channels and all that. It's just right there. And when I open, a channel in my DAW, and I want to open the instrument to mess with it, I instantly go over here, you know, the auto race function, I instantly go over to that specific instrument. I don't have to then later look through my list and search instruments, it's right there. And that is a great, great advantage. So I really prefer working this way. I also wanted to show you one thing that is really, really great with this, but that kind of works with other setups as well. And that is where you go to File and you go Import Instances from Server Project. And then, for example, I have my full orchestra here. And what I will get, it takes a little while now, is that you can see all my instances loaded here. It's a little bit hard to see, but they are all here. And what I can do now is I can uncheck all, and just load the ones I want. Maybe I want trombones and tuba for that project and trumpets. And I just click OK, I won't do that now, and load only those instances. And the great thing about that is that everything I've saved here, all this setup, it's there, it's ready to go. So I don't have to set up the instruments one more time. So is Vienna Ensemble Pro worth it or not? Well, it depends on a few things. What kind of templates do you have? If you have big, large templates, maybe big orchestras or a lot of tracks, a lot of instruments, then yes, it's really worth your time. If you only have a few tracks, maybe four to eight or even 10, then I wouldn't really say it's worth the investment. There's a lot to set up and that takes a little while. I think it depends a little bit on how you work and what kind of music you create. For example, big orchestral large templates, they are kind of static. You don't need to tweak them so much. But if you have a lot of synths and musical instruments that need to be tweaked for each song you make, then you won't save on the saving time. You still get the stability, obviously, and the workflow on your computer, but you won't speed up the saving time. Personally, I think Vienna Ensemble Pro is fantastic. It's a lifesaver. It's almost like a battery backup something you might want to consider as well when the pyro goes out and you're working on your song. Anyway, that's a different thing. It does have my template separate, so if something goes wrong, I haven't lost my project. And saving times, you know, saving big projects, it's a pain in the... And this really speeds up workflow. It actually has helped my creativity, and I'm serious about this. I'm not sponsored by Vienna. This is true to you. This is really what I think. It has helped my creativity because now I have the templates ready to go. I don't have to wait for them so long. It's easy to load up and switch between projects. So I really recommend it. I really like it. But you have to consider the extra cost on top of your DAW, obviously. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I really wanted you to know about this if you didn't already, because it could really be worth it to you if you're working similar to the way I do. 
Anyway, I hope the part about how to work the program was helpful because I found that it's not always too clear to know how to do this program properly. If you liked all this, I would really appreciate it if you let me know by writing a comment or hitting that like button or perhaps even subscribe if you want more of these videos. And again, if you want the songs that I have created for this video, you can get access to the MIDI files on my Patreon page. But until next time, this is Sam signing out. Take lots of care.